Hey guys, how's it going? So I was recently having outbursts at the gym, the office, grocery store, library, you name it. It could have been all that TRT I was taking, but I doubt it. I finally got into trouble at my local hangout. I disagreed with the quality of the lap dance from a performer. He's so hot, eh? And I guess the bouncer didn't approve. <laughs> like any of these people have souls anyways. So I decided to take my grievances outside, where I would teach this fellow a life lesson. <laughs> On my way to the hospital, I realized I had a problem. So I decided to take some anger management classes. I know they were court ordered, but that's besides the point. Anyways, after six weeks of pegging, I mean, the therapy, I can finally say that I'm cured. God, I feel good. I have a new positive view on life, and I now see things through an optimistic viewpoint. And I decided to celebrate my newfound anger sobriety by watching the Marvels. What better way to enjoy a day of probation than by watching an all-female superhero movie? What could go wrong? I'm excited here, guys. I've got my Midol in one hand and a box of tissues in the other. Let's get started. Captain Marvel 2, or The Marvels, begins with two folks. I think they're Kree, but no one is saying anything about them being Kree, so we're just gonna go with them being Kree. Anyways, they're breaking open some sort of vase, 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 and putting on some kind of armlet. I don't know what the f*** you call these things. I guess there were supposed to be two of them, but you know what? I'm sure this movie will give us the backstory, and I'm looking forward to it. Next up, we cut to Jersey City, and there's some teenager drawing a comic. Oh, looks like she has an armlet. I bet it's the other one that matches that set. Can't wait for the movie to explain the backstory. This teenager is drawing some strange animated comic, and I guess from this we can deduce that she has an unhealthy obsession with Captain Marvel. Uh, oh, and that her name is Kamala Khan, a.k.a. Ms. Marvel. All right, not the most original, but okay, you know, I'm feeling it. So Kamala's arm lip begins to glow, and she just disappears. Okay. Next, we cut to Captain Marvel basically recapping the first movie. I saw the first movie, so I know I'm prepared for this movie. Oh, that's my neighbor. Hold on one sec. Hi, Ed. I'm just watching the Marvels right now. How you doing? Did you watch Captain Marvel first? Yes, sir. I even just rewatched. Did you also watch WandaVision? Uh, was that a movie? No, Disney Plus TV show. Well, for movies, they usually recap. Did you watch Miss Marvel? Wait, there's a second show as well? Did you also watch Secret Invasion? Okay, okay, I'll, I'll go watch those shows. Give me a minute, motherfucker. Four to six days later. All right, I'm back. I uh, am ready to continue the Marvels. I mean, whew, there was a lot to watch just for one movie. You would think they would recap this sh It's 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 really fucking stupid to have to watch three god shows for a sequel to one fucking movie. No, 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 no. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm I'm keeping an open mind. Let's continue. So now having seen all these wonderful prequel TV shows that have such amazing writing and performances, we learn that Nick Fury is in space and reaches out to Carol Danvers regarding a surge in the jump point system. Somehow, now humans have the technology to monitor the jump point system? Really? All right, well, Fury asks Danvers to check it out and then mentions that Monica Ram, Ram, Rambio, Ram, 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 is out there, whatever, is out there with him, to which Carol shows something that looks like emotion? But it's good, it's good, it's, it's just, this, this is wearing on me, guys. It really is. So Monica Rambio, Rambio, Ram, Rambo. Okay, listen here, Cajun fans. This is how you spell Rambo. This is how you spell Rambio. Kind of like, this is go, this is gooks. It's really not that hard. This is a clip. This is a magazine. Enough! Moving on! So Monica Rambeau and Carol Danvers share an awkward moment on comms was as they both inspect the stupid jump point. Since apparently they haven't seen each other since Monica was a kid? Okay, and then there's an energy surge and all three ladies change places. Yes, I said all three. Rambo, Danvers, and Kamala Khan? Well, Danvers ends up in Khan's bedroom, and Khan ends up in Rambo's spacesuit, and Rambo ends up where Carol was. The funny part is that Carol looks the most freaked out, since Kamala's bedroom is a stalker shrine to her. Well, uh, this is awkward. So Carol attempts to use her power, and the ladies all switch back, and some leftover Kree attack Carol, and somehow she knows the name of the villain, Darben. Wait, how did she know who the leader was? I thought Kree uniforms were pretty standard looking, therefore, it could be anyone. No, 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 this, remember, this is Captain Marvel, and Captain Marvel is awesome! 
Caro somehow tracks the Kree ship and manages to get on board with Goose the Flurkin. While this is happening, Darben is on the surface, threatening to take out the atmosphere from a Skrull refugee camp. What happens next is one of the best fighting scenes I've ever seen choreographed in MCU history. <laughs> what we have is a full five minutes of all three ladies swapping back and forth to each other's location and fighting the bad guys. The Flurkin helps out Kamala by swallowing a couple of Kree, then swaps positions with Danvers and brings the Kree to her house in Jersey City where Captain Marvel somehow seems to have trouble kicking their ass. This doesn't make sense. I mean, really? Didn't Thanos try to headbutt Captain Marvel in Endgame and he nearly gets knocked out? I mean, he had to use an Infinity Stone just to knock her back. Uh, these are like normal Kree foot soldiers. Not even Ronin's elite guys from Captain Marvel. She f***ed up those guys when she was still learning her powers, but these clowns are really giving her a run for their money. She sucks. I get that there's some strange things going on, but it, it's Captain Marvel. She's a f***ing Avenger, if not one of the most powerful ones. And holy hell, Kamala Khan's family seems to be fearing about the same. Wait, did the flurkin just eat an accent chair? Uh, why? Also, this transporting back and forth gobbledygook winds up with Kree on the space station, and Nick Fury ends up in a shooting match against them in the space station, which happens to be in space. One would think that shooting weapons in a space station, especially with windows in the room, not be a good idea. It's uh, very dangerous to fire guns in planes. I guess I'm old fashioned that way, but it seems in many movies where there are potentially dangerous items you could hit, the standard position is that you don't shoot. <laughs> This is just really f***ing stupid and, uh, okay, stop, 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 no, 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 no. This is a good movie. Moving on. Once the Kree are defeated, Rambo, Kamala, and Fury end up at the Khan residence to discuss what's happening. And it doesn't take long for the plot to jump forward again, as their little light bright power starts swapping again, and it puts Rambo and Kamala on the bridge of Darben's ship. Well, this is so convenient. Okay, 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 this movie's still awesome. However, I... I can't help myself, but ask why Darben always has the look on her face like someone asked her a really hard question and she's trying to think of the answer. Urgh, what is the quadratic equation? Oh. If a train leaves the station, it travels 50 miles an hour. 15 minutes later, a second train leaves the same station and travels in the same direction on parallel tracks at 60 miles an hour. How long will it take before the second train overtakes the first? Urgh. Okay, I'm not trying to diss the movie. I'm just asking. Someone help me please in the comments. Oh yeah, make sure to like and subscribe. This way I can continue to bring more of this horrible content. I sure as hell will. Back to the movie. Okay, this resulting fight that ensues, again is showing Captain Marvel is barely holding her own against Darben. I'm struggling with this, folks. Captain Marvel took out Thanos' ship, the Sanctuary 2, as it was raining hellfire on Earth without breaking a sweat. This makes no sense. <laughs> I continue to bring it back, bring it back, bring it back, folks. Let's continue with this fine, fantastical fanfare. The Marvels end up on the Skrull refugee camp surface along with Darben, and it's at this point where Darben accuses the Skrulls of conspiring with Captain Marvel, who they've dubbed the Annihilator because she killed the Kree version of Skynet and it somehow turned off the planet's sun, drained the oceans, poisoned the air, and made everyone get irritable bowel syndrome. I sure as didn't know an AI could do that, but okay. Come on, nope, nope. We're, we're, we're staying positive, positive. Getting back to this scene. So the Marvels had appeared on Darben's bridge and then they followed Darben down to the surface and that's when Darben accused them of conspiracy. Wait, they were on the bridge, they followed Darben down and then Darben says, ha ha, you, you're, you're here to conspire. They do, well, they weren't there to begin with. This is really confusing, but I like how Darben kind of gives this calculated speech and I was extremely convinced, of course. <laughs> Not confused. I mean, in many ways, it's like if I were to stop by a shop in the city, and while I was there, a violent protest moves by. And I exit the store, and someone accuses me of being part of it. It's like, no, dude, I was just there to buy an erotic cake. But I guess this does give Darben the opportunity to start draining the Skrull refugee planet of its atmosphere. She's so clever, but I'm still missing Ashton's delivery on the Darben character that she's playing. It really is like she's thinking of something else while reading her lines. Have you ever tried taking a sh** and talking to someone over the phone? It's actually quite difficult. Hello? Yeah, I'd like to place an order for a cake. 
So the Marvels end up doing what they can do to save the scrolls, but I'd say based on the amount of scrolls that were still left on the planet, it looked like a pretty amazing failure. What I didn't quite understand is that while the atmosphere is being sucked out, it caused some of the ships to get sucked out as well, which is fine, except that then there's some rocks that are breaking apart, fall down to the ground versus getting sucked out too. I, maybe it's just space gravity. That's it. That's it. That's it. Well, with so many scrolls dead, Danvers, Khan, and Rambo look pretty damn defeated. What better way for a pick-me-up than some girl time and dancing around trying to coordinate their new girl swap with the light brights? The montage continues with intergalactic playing in the background while the Marvels end up perfecting their timing on their scissoring. I mean, swapping. They are going to be a force to be reckoned with. I feel like I've seen this scene before. Where was it? Uh, I promise it'll come to me. No. No. Well... Maybe later. Okay, so the Marbles figure out that Darben will most likely be looking for water next. And Danvers opines with suggesting that the planet Aladna would be her next target. Why? Well, apparently 99% of its surface is ocean. You know, that, that sounds reasonable to me. So the ladies hit the jump point and arrive at Aladna, only to discover that Captain Marvel has a secret. As the Marbles leave their ship, they're greeted by the local inhabitants with a song. And we find that Carol Danvers is also a princess. That's fucking stupid. Wait, wait a minute. They're greeted by a song. And Captain Marvel says the only way these fucking people communicate is by singing? Uh, no, I, I can't. I can't take much more. Then we meet the prince and come on, I just don't know anymore. Is that really a man? I, I know I'm a little old school. Can't tell the difference that much anymore. Long hair, no muscle, wearing a dress, singing, dancing, more singing, bad singing. That's a chick. Wait, no. Adam's apple. It's a man, baby. But as predicted, Darben shows up and starts a fight with the locals and the Marvels. Once again, Captain Marvel can't hold her ground with someone that has the same powers as Kamala Khan. Oh, f*** me. Speaking of Khan, while Monica and Carol are chasing Darben, Khan is fighting the Kree on the ground. She almost takes a hit when the prince saves her and then advises her to use her scarf for fighting. That's it. What the f***? Kamala Khan starts fighting mother Kree soldiers with a god scarf? Are you f***ing serious? It's a f***ing piece of cloth! Ah, no, no! That's it! I am f***ing done with this sh Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau, Kamala Khan, f*** you Nia DaCosta, f*** you Megan McDonald, and f*** you Alyssa Krauser! Oh, no. No. You heard me! I'm f***ing tired! I sat through an hour of this piece of garbage, stupid f***, Nimrod, f***ing bullshit, mother f***ing Well, that didn't work. I have no words left. The Marvels has to be the dumbest f***ing movie ever made. And I've seen a ton of movies in my day. Ah! Due to anyone that was part of this movie. It's complete trash. All I want from a superhero movie is some decent writing and some good fight scenes. And what do I get? A f***ing kid using a stupid f***ing red scarf to defeat enemy combatants. Dear God, just send me to hell now. I know I deserve it. I beg of you. I would rather enjoy an eternity of torture and damnation versus having to spend one more f***ing minute watching this mental trash! I tried. Please know that I tried. But this is not a superhero movie. This is the Hallmark Channel in space with a mangina and a dress. If I wanted to see entitled fatties duking it out, I'd f***ing go to Golden Corral when they're running out of chicken fingers. Jesus Christ! This is what we have these days for female empowerment? I mean, look at them! And I'm being serious. Look at their male counterparts. Look! Look how we compare the two. You give us three chicks, two of which obviously like carbs, and the third one is currently asking for my manager. Get the f*** out of here, Karen. I mean, seriously, when you look at the men's superheroes, you have some pretty decent eye candy for the ladies. I ain't complaining. F*** it. Give the girls what they want. But the guys need something too. If I wanted to watch a show with a bunch of pudgy chicks talking about their feelings and crying about how they aren't understood, I'd watch the f***ing view. <laughs> Come on, Marvel, you are better than this. I have no issues with female superheroes, but you do it right. You can make them strong and independent, just as long as it's Sydney Sweeney. I mean, she just, she looks like you can trust her. Ah, uh, oh, good. Let's wrap up this fucking movie. Darben kicks Karen Marvel's ass again and penetrates another hole in the jump gate. So explain to me why the fuck can't Kamala just close it? She's got one of those slap bands too, right? Whatever. The Marvels then have it a cry it out session after running away because they suck. I swear the only thing missing from this scene are just bottles of Sauvignon Blanc and f***ing Netflix. But we flip back to Nick Fury and apparently all the pegging that Darben is doing to the jump gates is causing a problem with the space station Saber. How? 
I don't know, but it's so much so that they have to abandon. But of course, most of the life pods suddenly aren't working and there is not enough room on the remaining life pods. What do you do? Oh no. Well, the latest MacGuffin is that there's been an infestation of some sort of egg type ball sack that's been popping up all over the station. What are they? Baby Florkin Pussycats. So many Pussycats. There are big Pussycats. There are small Pussycats. White Cats. Black Cats. Red Cats. Hairy Cats. So many Cats. And what do these Florkin Cats do? They eat people and not increase in size whatsoever. So if the Florkin Cats eat the crew, they can fit them in the transport pod. How convenient. I guess it's Flurkin Cats to the rescue. I've never seen so many Flurkin Cats. Cats are everywhere. Well, they managed to save all the crew and get them back safely to Earth. That's right. Who needs superheroes when you have so much cats? Do I really need to go any further with this fucking movie? Seriously, at least in the age of Ultron, Fury breaks out the helicarrier to help out the evacuation of Sokovia residents. It was a reasonable and logical solution to help out on a crisis. But the Marvels say, hold my glass of Pinot Grigio. We're going to solve this crisis with cats. Ah, oh, it's just, it's really just fucking stupid. Well, then is yet another fight scene where the Marvels are fighting Darben again. I swear, I still don't get Ashton's approach to Darben. The look on her face is the same look I get from my toddler when I tell him I have cookies. <laughs> But the end result of this final fight is Darben gets her hand on the other bracelet and then unceremoniously just blows herself up. It's like she pulled a Kurt Cobain. Stop. However, Darben manages to tear a hole in space to another dimension right as she dies, and Monica Rambo then uses her power to stop it, but she gets stuck in the alternate dimension. The movie ends with Kamala Khan and her family moving into Rambo's old home and basically stealing her shit. Ah. Really? I get it when people disappeared at the end of Infinity War. You thought they were gone forever. So finders keepers, but hell man, Monica is just MIA at best. So I guess it's a good excuse to go raid her house. Ah. Squatters. You know, I came into this movie with an open mind. I was reformed and I was happy, but after watching the Marvels, I ah. hate life. There is no hope for the MCU. Karen Marvel's done. Kamala Khan wasn't horrible, but I still don't know what she does or why she even exists. So no one gives a ah. No one gives a ah. about Rambo. The only good thing is that you really forgot that Rambo was even in the movie half the time. And then when they sealed her in the alternate universe, it actually kind of felt good. So in closing, the 90 minutes I spent watching this movie undid months of therapy. But you know what? Rather than ah. about it, I'm going to pour myself a glass of scotch and see if Tiffany is working at the club again tonight. <sighs> All this watching of Flurkin <laughs> hat has got me firing on all cylinders. I'm going in, boys. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, thank you for watching. We hope you understand this is just satire and we have a good time doing it. If what you saw here made you happy, please hit the like and subscribe button. And if you didn't like what you saw here, please hit the like and subscribe button because it'd make me happy. Thanks for watching. Now, please, just leave me alone.